<laughs> now I need to make it clear before we begin today's video that these are made for educational purposes and we do not, I repeat, we do not encourage that anybody watching ever tries any substance for themselves. Let's jump head first, and I do mean head first because nitrous and DMT is surely going to knock you unconscious, into today's absolutely ridiculous, why the hell am I doing this video? Now, without going into too much detail about what nitrous oxide and, uh, you know, DMT are, I've already covered these in great depth in multiple videos. However, I will briefly tell you that nitrous oxide is a legal, you know, in many countries to obtain, uh, actually, food preparation product. It's used to make whipped cream. Usually when you add the nitrous oxide, it actually looks like whipped cream, though. I think this one needs more nitrous to it. <laughs> That's much better. Man, I got such a messy workstation here. Jesus, fucking slob, man. I'm sorry for letting my silliness get the best of me in this one. Try to take my job more seriously from now on. Did I get it all? Sorry, vegans. It's vegan whipped cream, I swear to God. <sighs> Honestly, YouTube isn't going to like this video because what I have to say, I mean, I, I do make these videos for harm reduction and to you know explain these experiences so that you guys don't have to, but what am I supposed to do when I have an experience that was enjoyable? I'm afraid to admit that I had a good time because basically everything I say is completely frickin' censored, and if I say anything that even teeters into the positive realm of a substance experience, people not only will be like, you're such an addict, you know, as if they don't enjoy their alcohol, or cigarettes, or weed, or whatever, but more importantly, the videos I post get like this shadow band on them, and they don't get shared, which has been happening to a lot of my stuff lately. So I'm extremely apprehensive, just from a fucking I am a content creator standpoint on YouTube, I'm apprehensive to be completely honest about experiences, but you know what, I sat down just now, I was about to meditate, and then I saw, no, screw that. Why not just be honest? Don't do it, you're throwing yourself in the garbage. Fuck it, fuck it! So, I decided that I was going to combine NO2 or N2O, nitrous oxide, laughing gas, with NN dimethyltryptamine just because of why the hell not science. Let's see what happens and what comes out of this. To be completely honest, I went back and back and back and back again, almost like I was in a merry-go-round loop-de-loop, -loop, which kind of fits in with the nitrous visuals in the mix, which looked like there was a ton of little spinning, I don't know, smiley faces almost? Kaleidoscope vision that was just whoop, sucking me in, pushing me out, sucking me in, pushing me out. Sounds like we're talking about sex, just pumping. <laughs> Woo! So, what would you say if I told you I'm completely sober, I'm not on any amphetamines or anything right now? Now, I wanted to make sure that I smoked the DMT during the peak nitrous effects. Of course, you can't really start with DMT. I mean, you can start the train with nitrous, go to DMT, and then when you snap out of it, do nitrous, DMT, nitrous, DMT, which is kind of what happened. Let's just get into what the experience was like. I weighed out 35 milligrams, which is a breakthrough dose. I lit it, inhaled, exhaled, inhaled, exhaled, total of three or four times, and wow. How do I describe this? Well, I'll start by saying, interestingly enough, the nitrous put me in just a very calm, chilled out vibe where the anxiety around smoking t DMT was severely diminished, which is interesting because DMT can be bloody terrifying. So to have even a little bit of that anxiety being diminished was cool. I remember feeling the effects of DMT coming on very strong, the buzzing happening, you know, just traditional shit. I felt like I was getting torn from my body, so I just sat there and I told myself to breathe. Those little smiley face nitrous spinning things uh, quickly transformed into like full-blown rotating geometrical spline shapes that were just, instead of like little spinning things, everything went like and then it would break apart into more spinning things and it would just classify everything as spinning, spinning around. 
sounds intensifying. And I felt as though I was starting to lose my consciousness. Ow. As this happened, fear didn't just creep in, it engulfed me. Why am I so scared all of a sudden? This was supposed to be calm. I mean, when I first took a few hits, I was feeling calm, but I think as the nitrous started to wear off and the DMT completely overpowered it, I started to get scared and frightened like a little boy. And I just remember saying to myself, it's okay, Adam, just breathe. Just, you've done this before. You know you're gonna be okay. You'll be back. But how are you supposed to stay calm while it feels like you're facing your own death? As much as I'm telling myself to breathe and it was keeping me grounded, it truly felt like an alien presence was trying to rip my soul out of my body. It was inviting me into alien terrain and it wanted to show me something beautiful. But little scared ego was just like, oh, no, 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 I thought I could take this, but I can't. I didn't want to let go. And you know what? I was right there, right at the cusp of the breakthrough in the tunnel. I could feel myself going into my breath. Whereas in normal consciousness, I'm like, you know, I'm breathing right now in and out and I'm aware of the breath. It felt like I became my breath. And as I went to exhale, my consciousness attached itself to the oxygen molecules and it was like, Whoop, we're getting out of here now, man. Peace out. <sighs> what I imagine uh, death to be like, like, you know, as you take that last breath, your consciousness literally shuts off, but maybe it doesn't shut off. Maybe it exits through the breath and you transcend this dimension and become one with all of conscious existence. And perhaps that's an experience all in its own right, because I was on the cusp of oneness, but my fear held me to my body. I don't know how else to describe it except for alien. It was so alien. I say alien because it was just so not what being human feels like. And it was, it was a force, man. It was a strong, strong, powerful, otherworldly powerful force that just took over my being. It wasn't scary though. I made it scary because it just felt so strange. Words do not do a good job of justifying the fucking weirdness of it all. Language is so gosh darn limited. I wish I could sit here and actually explain what that feeling is like, but I can't and it's so frustrating because it is such a unique feeling. There's nothing else in conscious existence that is anywhere close to how that feels. You are completely convinced that it's not happening within your mind. And, and somehow I, I did manage to calm myself down, but I feel like me calming down was directly in relation to me realizing that I wasn't actually leaving. But then as soon as I realized I wasn't leaving, I was like, crap, no, I wanted the breakthrough. I wanted to go. Why did I fight it so bad if I thought it was what I wanted? It's like, I felt this rush of euphoria hit me as I realized, oh good, I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying. I mean, I'm definitely in the tunnel. Like I'm not able to get up and walk, but the tunnel was comfortable. In the tunnel, I was still aware of having a body and I wasn't effing dead. It was very clear to me that to break through, to rip a hole, a portal to the other dimension, it would require me acknowledging the death of Adam. And I just wasn't ready to do that. There's two ways to do it. You either are proficient in dying or you just smoke so much that you don't have a choice but to uh, let go. And I tried. I really tried to do enough, but I guess it just wasn't, it wasn't good enough. My ego was too gosh darn strong and I held on. And it's interesting because even that cusp of a breakthrough experience showed me so much. I have so many answers that I didn't have now. And I, have to be, I gotta be really careful what I give away because I'm doing the other parts of the DMT versus 5MEO DMT video. And a lot of what I've experienced in the mixing is similar to the experience that I had with just, you know, taking it for the video. So it's like, I don't wanna say too much because I don't wanna be repeating myself in other videos. So there's a lot that I'm leaving out. Just know that there's more that I'm saying. But, but then what is really cool actually is as I was like coming back and you know, I was breathing and I had managed to catch my breath or my consciousness it sucked it back in as it was trying to exit through that final breath and say goodbye to my body. And then I was like, oh shit, no, 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 let's go back. I didn't, I wanted to go further. Why did I get scared? And then I took another balloon, you know, filled her up. 
And that was cool, man. Because when I came back, like, like I became conscious probably still while I could have if I wanted to spend another two minutes with my eyes closed. Because when I opened my eyes, everything was digitized. I was in a video game. I was in Grand Theft Auto, baby. And someone wasn't stealing cars, they were stealing souls. Soul snatching. And the DMT aliens, they wanted me bad. Because this whole world looked like a simulated game. I've said this before, but holy shit, words do not accurately express what that looks like. You can play a game and be like, yeah, man, that's digital. That looks like CG graphics. But when you're actually consciously looking around without a VR headset on and everything looks like somebody put it together in a computer, it changes your life. It changes the way you see shit. That was fucked, man. Really crazy. So imagine taking a hit of nitrous while you're having this experience. <laughs> The nitrous really just helped calm me down. Uh, it brought back the DMT buzz. It was just, it was a pretty relaxed, euphoric. I would classify it as being heavily euphoric and warm because I was still feeling that DMT buzz and the DMT can feel like it's tearing your body to pieces, but in a pleasurable way, like, hey, I'm gonna cut you up with my little knife into tiny little particles, but I'm gonna make it feel good. That's how I felt. I was like, all my skin was like, massive pins and needles and then the nitrous just made it all feel even better and it's like yeah i'm getting cut up oh it's cool it's freaking cool so cool in fact that i stayed on the ride for about 12 more canisters i was determined at that point to get a breakthrough so i just kept another hit of dmt wouldn't let me break through again it's like i felt like they were blocking me from getting there because they were like, nah, -uh, you're cheating. You're not meeting us today. You think you're going to cheat your way here by taking the nitrous to calm you down? Hell no. The only way you're breaking through is if you do it in the most frightening and terrifying way possible, which is no hacks, baby. No calm down pills. You got to do this on your own sober because they were blocking my entrance. I felt really stuck, but also like I was entering some kind of an alien world. And man, did I ever feel like shit the next freaking day. I highly do not recommend this experience to anybody. DMT is enough of a beast on its own. Mixing nitrous in with it was just insanely reckless. But hey, I'd probably do it again. Cool as shit. Don't recommend anyone watching does this. I mean, really, I don't. DMT has the potential to really fuck you up. So I can't say I recommend it, but just from like a psychonaut standpoint, that was cool as tits. I, I'm more of an ass guy actually, but um, that was freaking awesome, man. That was crazy. All right, YouTube, that's fine. You can delete this video now. I did it. I, I said that I had a psychedelic experience that was awesome. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I'm, I want to be truthful. And if I'm giving in to my emotions right now, it says don't. Don't do it. Overlay more messages of caution. And I'm being as cautious as I can. It's insanely intense and scary, and I don't recommend anyone tries it. But for me, it was fucking awesome. And yes, I'd do it again. I hope you enjoyed this video. Join our Patreon, support me, pledge to the channel. More real content coming soon. It's hard to say this is real when I seem like I'm acting crazy, but I'm just, that's how I feel right now. I feel crazy. Maybe I'm just putting on a show, who knows? I mean, there's a little bit of putting on a show here because it's fun. It, it's honestly like fun making videos and like jumping around and acting like I'm a lunatic. Like, oh my God, oh, it's fun. I've got like a bit of an actor in me. This is fun. I like making real videos, crazy videos, effed up videos, videos that smash society standards of what's normal or acceptable. I like all of it, man. So why not just let go and be freaking weird? Because I'm going to get demonetized. What's that? You're gonna demonetize me? Cool. Well, guess what? This video showed absolutely no footage of the experience. I'm saving that for another video where I'm going to explain it in more depth and I'm going to narrate the whole thing. It's gonna be a live experience, but narrated. No one's ever done any shit like that before, man. Yeah, that's gonna be cool. I think that's what I'll do with the live footage. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this one, guys. I'm in a weird mood today.